Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of 99 Names of Allah. We are now on our 24th session. So, uh, alhamdulillah, just uh, under one week left and we will be complete uh, with the 99 names, uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, so today we'll uh, be covering um, four more names, uh, just like last time. And inshallah, we'll have one more day where we cover uh, five names, but every other day should be four day, four names. And so whether you're joining us here in the space or you're watching us live or watching this in the future, we welcome you, alhamdulillah. So last time we covered the names Al-Muqaddim. Uh, these were all pairs, uh, names that were pairs uh, two and two. And so you had Al-Muqaddim, the one who accelerates, the one who puts first, the one who um, goes, fosters and, and, and brings about. And then you have al muakhir the postponer, the one who puts after, the one who delays. Al-Awwal, the first, the beginning, the origin, and Al-Akhir, the last and the end. And we lifted up how these names help us see time differently, help us see our own lives very differently and how things happen to us in life, how things happen to us in the spectrum of our time and to value those on a much different scale and on a much different level of significance, having known that Allah is the one that accelerates, knowing that Allah is the one that delays and knowing that Allah is the one who is there, the, the one that is the first before everything and after all it's said and done, Allah is also there at the end. And so it gives us a heightened awareness of time and our, our sins here. So with that, we'll inshallah go ahead and begin with the Asma'il Husna, the 99 names, and we will go ahead and uh, transition to our four names for today. So the four names for today are Al-Zahir, the manifest, the revealed, the visible, Al-Batin, the hidden, the invisible, the secret one, Al-Wali, the regent, the governor, the patron, the protecting ruler, and al muta'ali the sublime, the high, the uppermost, and the self-exalted. So with those, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, go into uh, in detail uh, after the Asma'il Husna. So let me share my screen. Alrighty. So uh, yeah, so uh, before I start the Asma'il Husna here, uh, I wanted to share a tidbit that uh, yesterday, so on Wednesdays, I go to the, uh, to the Travis State Jail here. Um, and do just a Wednesday uh, men's kind of support group uh, chaplaincy class there. And one of the, some, one of the uh, brothers in the previous week had asked about just the 99 names of Allah. I wasn't very familiar with it. Most of the brothers there are new converts. And so uh, we, we did a recitation of these and we did it at that space. And it was just, you know, none of these brothers had been familiar with the 99 names. They just kind of heard of it but all they knew was Allah. And so many of them had names like Razak or Wali or any of these names that you have um, that, that, that are uh, from the 99 names. And so it was just such a moving thing to see that when they were, they had a list of the 99 names and we were reading through it, we recited through it. And as they were looking through it, um, so many of them, you know, were moved because of the, uh, that they saw the meanings. It was right in front of them what they mean, but then also they saw their own name. They were able to connect in terms of themselves. They're like, I never knew my name. I had a, a name, uh, you know, that that came from this name. Uh, and so it was. It, it it lifted up that concept of when we are looking at these names, when we are reciting these names, there's something special there. There's something special that we can connect to. For them, it might have been the names, it might have been the meanings, but there's something that we can all connect to with these names. So with that, let's go ahead and. Let's begin the recitation. Inshallah, we can find some connection with these names here. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hu Allahu alladhi la ilaha illahu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار 
المتكبر الخالق الباري المصور الغفار القحار الوهاب الرزاق الفتاح العليم القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المضل السميع البصير الهكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الهليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الهفيذ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصع الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد الحق الوقيل القوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المهي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقيم العفو الرؤوف مالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانع الضار النافع النور الهادي البديء الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور So with these names inshallah we begin our uh, conversation with the four names for today. So Bismillah. The first name that we are discussing today is Al-Zahir. Al-Zahir is, as I mentioned, the manifested, the revealed, the visible. Al-Zahir shows the divine manifested in the visible world. The existence of the divine, like those divine sparks, all of these things we've been talking about for the past few uh, few sessions here, that how the divine is manifested and the divine has created and Allah has created creation with these divine sparks, with these divine attributes. And you can see it embedded in, and Al-Zahir is the manifest of that, is the existence of that, is the existence of that in all things. And in our essence as well as, as humans, but as cre creation that it has been not just created and not just shaped, but creation that has been uh, imbued with a the spirit of Allah, imbued with this divine spirit that we know we are at our essence, at our core, connected to the divine, that uh, we, we really have a strong internal connection, a very primordial connection that's there that's deep within us but we've coded it so much on top with so many other things like the 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 layers of our life so many other things that are coming there we look at uh how, what connections we build before then and it, this this inner connection to the divine gets suppressed gets put down and so we feel less connected to the, the divine we feel like you know, we, we have an internal separate or sorry, a, uh, a, a very uh, defined separation. And so, but at our root, what this name reminds us is that we are connected to the divine because the divine, as Al-Zahir does, shows the divine manifested in the visible world. And for us, we have it coming into ourselves. We have our, our own essence in internal in, in our innermost part showing that we're connected to the divine. But the root of this word of, of al-Zahir has the meanings of being evident, to come to light, to show oneself, to come up, to emerge, to win the upper hand, to overcome, to obtain knowledge, to unveil, to be visible, 
and to be recognizable. And Allah shows through these divine names, through that we've discussed, through these divine qualities, as well as the light of the signs and symbols uh, that, that Allah is manifest, that Allah is manifest. You can't see Allah, of course, in terms of the manifest that is there. Allah can't be seen or perceived per se, because that's, that's beyond our, uh, beyond any creation's faculty. But with Allah, it shows that there is Allah. Allah is manifest in, in so many things, and but also that so many things reflect Allah. So many things reflect the divine attributes of Allah. And so many things reflect that there is Allah because of, of these things. And so Allah comes manifest there. And so, as I mentioned, you see the uh, divine light in your own heart. When, when, when we work on ourselves, when we purify ourselves, when we really do some heart work, uh, we, we, we see that divine light manifest. But at the present, for many of us, it's, it's just it's our, our hearts, our outside, our inside, they're all filled with kind of like the, 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 the attachments of this life, the attachments of things that are very finite. And so when we do that heart work, we can see that that light come about, but we see that internal connection that we all share to the divine, that, that internal origin that's there, but it takes some work to uh, peel, peel the layers back and get to there. This name, when applied into, into our lives here, it really grants us the necessary strength in times or situations when we really need to be brave or explicit or to uncover our positive deeds and show them clearly and honestly. It helps us, uh, in, in, in a sense, balance that inner and outer. We talked about the different lives we sometimes live in terms of our private lives and our public lives and all this with some previous names. But this name helps us think about uniting the visible life of this world, the visible life that we put to, put out here, but also the life on the on the inside. What are we thinking? What's there? And what what are we maybe really thinking about? What's what's what all is um what all is really going on? And so when we think about El Zahir, it helps us think about the unity between the visible world and the life of the beyond, the life of the visible world right here and the life of the beyond, because each has been created by Allah, each has been imbued with those divine sparks, and there is a inherent unity that is there, that uh, is manifest in the hidden life of the beyond and the life to come, uh, there is Allah. And in this uh, life, there is Allah as well. We just sometimes have to uh, to look. We just have to try and be a little bit more mindful because this world is, uh, as the Quran says, it's a distraction. It's a distraction. And there's so many things that uh, that have been created by us and so many things that humanity will, will uh, put up that distract us from Allah. And you know, this, this name helps us to peel that back and see, well, where is the divine manifest? Where is Allah in this world amidst a world of suffering, but also a world of uh, gross income inequality, a world of amazing, you know, technological achievements, marvels, world, one, uh, world wonders, all these different things. Where, where is Allah in these? And so we do a, a sort of searching there. But in doing that searching, we also then connect ourselves more to the divine, but we connect ourselves as well uh, to the rest of the creation as we reflect the divine attributes and or seek to try and reflect and try and find them. It, uh, this name pairs with another name uh, that, is, uh, that is seen as kind of the opposite, but it pairs very well with it. It's Al-Baltin. Al-Baltin is the hidden, the invisible, the secret one, the inward. Al-Baltin is because, as I mentioned, Allah is not is not visible and uh, is 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 not able to be seen. But Al-Zahir is exists or is there because the manifestations point to Allah. So you see that uh, Al-Zahir and Al-Baltin represent Allah's exoteric and those esoteric aspects. Uh, Al-Baltin is uh, is basically too is like to the physical eye in a sense that it, it can't be seen can't be perceived. Um, it's hidden from the physical eye. But uh, Al-Zahir as well is the manifest, but manifest to the heart, to the, the places of deep perception. So Al-Baltin, -Al it can be seen through the, the divine, even though it's the hidden, it can be perceived and understood through the divine truth that exists in all things, through the understanding that everything is connected. So Al-Baltin -Al is hidden 
um, and, and, and behind the scenes, but it doesn't mean that it's not there. And al-zahir is when Allah is manifest, manifest in different ways, not that Allah comes and manifests, but like in different things that, that uh, show those connections to the divine. And so we, we see those connections that this is from Allah, this is from Allah, this is from Allah. Uh, and al-batin is that, that concept of just having that faith, having that belief that Allah is, even when there may not be anything there. And so the uh, light of the divine in al-zahir is conveyed in our body and our actions, and the light of uh, al batin is conveyed in our internal souls and our belief. And so, when uh, when we talk about this light of the divine contained in our or conveyed in our body and our actions, talk about that manifest. So you can think of something that's manifest that that you actually put something to action, you put something to work. You, and you this doesn't just have to be for us, but our body, our actions, but of the creation moving around, anything kind of going about uh, any of the uh, the creation changing, all of these external actions, those uh, reflect, those have the uh, potential to be manifestations in that sense. But the light of al batin is an internal one, is one that's in the souls, is one that can't be seen by the physical eye. And so when we connect with al batin we help to not just give ourselves a bit of calm and poise to uh, to, to understand and to, to know that we're not just uh, you know, these bipedal uh, mammals that, that just are existing, we have so much more to us there. Uh, it also has a concept of, like so many other names, of restraining the ego, uh, of keeping us in check, because we, 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 we look for the divine within us in the sense that where's those divine sparks, and that we're not just these, you know, uh, the, these Two two legged uh, creatures that are just kind of walking around, and we've, we've developed intelligence, but we have a divine light to us. We have a uh, divine kind of connection that is there, and so we lift that up. We lift that up because it it helps us then uh, to know that there's there's much more to us than just ourselves. There is Allah, and even though we cannot see Allah in al batin but we can search for Allah. We can find Allah and make Allah in the sense, uh, in our minds as a dhahir. We can find the manifest. And so the root of this word has the, uh, the meanings of hidden, secret, to hide, to, dis to try to discover, to, um, to know exactly, to penetrate, to become absorbed. And along with the names of al-awal, al-akhir, al-dhahir, and al in here, these names capture the in cover as Ibn Arabi says, they capture and cover in time and space, the beginning and end, the high and the low. They uh, capture outwardness, inwardness, and they enfold everything outside and inside, and nothing exists externally or internally that is not enfolded by Allah. So these names, which we've covered two of them in the last session, and these two we're covering, we've just covered now, in al-awal, al-akhir, al-zahir, al-batin, they let us know that nothing exists externally or internally without Allah, that it's not in some way, shape, or form connected to or surrounded by Allah. So ultimately, as we close out with this name, it causes us to be mindful. It causes us to be uh, seeing the world not just as a, a really cool place to live or, hey, this is a really weird place or this is a bad place. This is you know, whatever our view of the world is or the uh, community around us or the society around us or whatever we may see, the world in and of itself, as high as it gets, as low as it gets, it remains a world of symbols. It, it remains a place of symbols, uh, symbols that help us see and try to uh, look for the manifestations of the divine. Sometimes the world can become a really hard place to find something like this. And so it causes us to then do the heart work, kind of find the divine within us, find those sparks within us. But uh, we know that this creation was created by Allah, by Allah with these divine attributes and these divine sparks. Uh, and not just us, but all of the creation. And so it helps us to really, when we seek to become better people, it causes us to make, to create a better world because we know where it came from and we know what is embedded in it. So just imagine that if uh, someone had told you that, hey, there is like on this, on this entire planet, there's just uh, an abundance of gold just buried everywhere. You'd probably be out there the next day with your metal detector and going and looking for it. Or if we said it's embedded with diamonds, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be uh, too far fetched to say, okay, let me just get my shovel and just start digging in my backyard. Who knows? I might have something there. But 
even regardless if you have to do that work, you know that there are these gems there. And so we know that these gems of Allah are embedded everywhere around the world. And so we've just got to do a little bit of that work to try and find uh, Allah. We've got to do a little bit of that metal detecting, a little bit of that digging, uh, because these are all embedded, all embedded there. But sometimes we just have to dig a little bit past uh, the surface of what we've created here uh, to find the that primordial, that beauty that Allah has um, put into each and everything and within us. Same thing with us. You know, we have those diamonds, we have those, go those gold and those precious metals within us. Sometimes we just have to dig and we have to put that metal detector to us and we have to find where where are those gems it, it, it won't just manifest one day um, as, as hopeful as we might be because it requires uh, and any kind of these precious metals or uh, precious gems require you to go through a little bit dig a little bit out uh, but then also purify to also uh, take care of and so it calls for us to be mindful of this world that it's not just one that we're just you know uh, it, it's like that that hotel that we're that we're checking out for a while or that rental car we're taking for a while uh it is a world that we are caretakers of and responsible for and uh one that points us back to allah so uh with that name being said inshallah we'll go to the next two names uh as we will close out al-wali and al-muta'ali so al-wali is the regent the ruler the patron it has the same rules of al-wali um the protecting friend uh, so you have these meanings of support connection to the connection, um, to lead, uh, close, intimate, all these things that are there. And compared to Al-Wali, Al-Wali emphasizes essentially the protective aspect of the intimate relationship with Allah. Uh, Al-Wali looks after all the affairs of the creation. It fills us with uh, the feeling of security and certainty that we are enfolded in the divine. So you have al-zahir al-batin that make us know that there is, you know, the divine there. But then al-wali gives us that comfort that this is not just a, you know, we just walked into this cloud or anything like that. But you are now in a very much of a protected fold. You're a very protected fold uh, from the world around, from from the evil within yourself. And uh, al-wali, as I mentioned, guards us from uh, seeing what, in, in the sense, it guards us from seeing what we have achieved, what we have created, what we've done just as our own. So oftentimes this name can help check us in terms of our arrogance, in terms of our ego, because we know that when we're in, 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 enfolded by Allah, when we're enfolded by Allah, it's not just us doing all these things, that Allah plays a hand too. So uh, it, it, it really protects us from yielding to and obeying the voice of our ego uh, and takes us time and time back again to that inner guidance, to those inner reminders. We might let, we might go to our ego one time or here and there, but it reminds us that there's more to this than just us. And so it grants us the help, support, and protection that we need on the path to our true self. So what we can do with this name, we'd be okay with asking for protection. And when internalized, we become people that are not just okay with having a relationship with Allah that we ask protection, that we feel vulnerable enough to ask Allah for protection, but we also then, as with any name, take it to the outward aspect and channel it through us that we become people who are ready to protect others, to stand up for justice, to stand up for people's rights, to uh, free ourselves, to stand up for our own selves from the attachments and the different things that weigh us down in this life. And so we make ourselves free from any of those self-interested motives, the lower impulses, the attachments that we have. We become protectors of ourselves as well, of our hearts. And lastly, uh, our actions and uh, our actions are prompted and they're influenced by awareness of the divine. They're not, not by the ch uh, changing circumstances or varying conditions of our societies or depending on what, uh, what, what's a new fad or what's a new trend. These, uh, the, this name helps us remind us that our actions and what we do are from a place of mindfulness, from a place of consistency, but also from a place in which it's uh, an awareness of Allah, an awareness of Allah. And so those actions are consistent. Those actions follow a same, uh, the same stripe there. Lastly, the last thing we cover here, inshallah, is al-muta'ali, the sublime, the highest, the uppermost, the self-exalted. And so we see with this name that uh, al-muta'ali is superior to everything. Nothing is comparable. We, uh, it's a source that never, uh, you know, dries up and, you know, from which everything comes. It's 
It's this infinite superiority to everything that is there. It's just a you know, this just a complete otherworldliness. This just complete um, uppermost type of quality, and it's the uh, potential that we might that we might be described with in terms of uh, human concepts in a sense that uh, we, we, we can only define it so much and it's beyond those. And so it has the same root of the name we covered earlier of Ali, the tall, elevated, exalted, sublime, excellent. And it gives us the strength here, despite the fact that it's just like, wow, there's like, you know, is, is Allah that separate from the creation? Is Allah that high, that, that, that far out? From the creation that we don't we can't even compare the beautiful thing about it is that Allah is is at that that highest point that are we can't even perceive but also Allah reminds us Allah is at is nearer to us than our jugular veins is uh is there when when called upon tells uh, the believers I am near so you see that despite Allah being at this this high level whatever it may be as you perceive it whether literally or just in terms of the metaphor uh and spiritually that allah is at that rank or whatever it may be at the highest but still comes down to the lowest is there in the lowest with the creation in 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 their most intimate uh part in their most uh most you know just the most intimate part but also in the most closest of relation and so this name gives us that strength to to rise progressively to an expanded and superior consciousness, not, not a expanded and superior rank, not, not a sense that we will become better uh, over other people, but it helps us to uh, want to grow in terms of our spirituality, in terms of our consciousness, so that we don't see anymore that we're above other people, because this name teaches us Allah is above everybody else, and we are all on that same plane. We talked about last time when looking down from the sky in an airplane and you see people walking around, or if you eat right now, you just walk outside, you see ants, you can't see which one's bigger, which one's this, they all are appearing the same. Uh, and in the same light, we, we are all equal before Allah. We are all equal before Allah. And so uh, it, it, it prompts us to be not uh, racing to see who can be the taller one, because at the end of the day, we'll all be seen as the same, but who can be a better person? We, we, we race towards that, which is good. And so as we close out with this name, it, this name helps us make, uh, make, makes us true servants of the earth, true stewards of the earth, true caretakers of not just the earth, but of our faith and of one another. And we can't escape that responsibility that that is there. And this name helps us follow ultimately a path of balance, path of responsibility, path of knowledge and honesty to share that knowledge generously, to keep racing towards making ourselves higher, not in a worldly rank, but in a rank that is in spirituality, in a rank towards Allah. And so as we close out with these names here today, we see that uh, Allah is manifest in the world around us. And, and we just have to sometimes dig because the world can become a very different place. Al-Baltin is the hidden that Allah is always there. We may, we may be hard pressed to find these manifestations anywhere, depending on where we are, how hard that work is to do. But we take comfort that despite all that, Allah is behind it all. Allah is still there. It's the hidden. But also uh, in, in a world, regardless of how it is, we are protected by Allah. We are enveloped in this protection. And lastly, that Allah is above all else. But in this above all else, uh, Allah is still nearer to us than our most intimate part, than our most uh, closest heartbeat. Uh, Allah is there as well. So inshallah, we close out today with a, a, a dhikr of each of these names and uh, a reflection on them. So Bismillah, let us go ahead and begin. <laughs> La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Zahir, 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 Ya Zahir, Ya Zahir, Ya Zahir, Ya Zahir, 
Ya Zahir, Ya Zahir, Ya Zahir, Ya Zahir. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Ba'tin, 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 Al-Ba'tin. Al-Ba'tin, 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 Al-Ba'tin. Ya Ba'tin, Ya Ba'tin, Ya Ba'tin, Ya Ba'tin, Ya Ba'tin. Ya Ba'tin, Ya Ba'tin, Ya Ba'tin. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Wali, 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 Al-Wali. Al-Wali, 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 Al-Wali. Al-Wali, 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 Al-Wali. Ya Wali, 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 Ya Wali. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al-Mutta'ali, 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 Al-Mutta'ali. Al-Mutta'ali, 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 Al-Mutta'ali. Ya Mutta'ali, Ya Mutta'ali, Ya Mutta'ali, Ya Mutta'ali, Ya Mutta'ali, Ya Mutta'ali, Ya Mutta'ali. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. So brothers and sisters, inshallah, we will see you tomorrow for another four names of uh, Allah. But take these names to know that Allah is around us. We may not be able to see Allah, but Allah is there. And uh, to know, to increase our mindfulness and consciousness in our everyday actions, because you have those divine sparks in you. We just have to dig a little bit to find them. So Zakla khair, inshallah, we'll see you all tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.